This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and this one has been through the ringer, folks. Let me tell you, the owner of this one has swapped out pretty much everything he can think of. He swapped the CPU out. I'm pretty sure he swapped the graphics card out, the RAM. He has tried so many different configurations to get this thing back up and running, and he still has not been able to pull it off, which is why it's here in the office. Specifications for this rig are pretty solid. We've got an Intel 9th Gen Core i7 non-K SKU in here, so it's not overclockable, which is why it's bundled with the stock cooler, which I think just, it bothers me so much that Intel bundled these things with stock cooler. Whether they're locked or not, no Core i7 should ever be paired with this crappy, cheap stock cooler. Anyway, that aside, uh, RTX 2070 here from Gigabyte, that's sweet. Looks like we've got two different sets of DDR4 modules in here. That, it's unlikely that's causing the issues being described here, but we will play around with that config just a bit. I also noticed up front, he has three fans, but only two of them are set to intake for some reason, and then the one up top is set to exhaust, and then we've got an exhaust at the right. I, I assume the owner thought it would be more beneficial to have two intakes and two exhaust fans, and that's why he did things that way, but I would recommend, especially in this case here, we have a pretty restricted front panel that you swap that front fan to intake. So you have three intakes to work pretty hard to get fresh air in and then just one exhaust. You'll have passive exhaust pretty much everywhere else, including up top here uh, in this case, which is not, uh, it, it's not my favorite case by a long shot. It is an iBuy Power pre-built. Uh, and so yeah, sometimes these uh, companies like to cut some corners. They might cut corners in the case. They might cut corners on the power supply or maybe both. I did check this motherboard out. It's a B365M ultra durable from Gigabyte. It natively supports both eighth and ninth gen Intel. It's only a micro ATX board. So it looks a bit weird in this mid tower ATX case, but that's beside the point. Uh, I'm going to check to see what BIOS revision it has. Though There's a couple that we could update to assuming this has the base revision because there's a pretty big security patch uh, that came out a bit later for this that we'll, we'll probably want to tackle. You could also straighten up some uh, DDR4 inconsistencies as well. By the way, very quickly, if you have a broken system and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, I'd love a chance to fix your build for free. A chance. I might not fix it, but at least I'll be able to tell you more than likely what's wrong with it. Um, and we have plenty of hardware sponsors. Uh, they send us parts all the time. Uh, so you won't have to pay a dime. That's my goal is to charge you nothing for the service. Don't expect a bill. That's not what we do here. I monetize this content and that's how I make my money. And uh, I'm just appreciative that you're allowing me to create videos that are both informative and entertaining to some extent uh, for the channel. So thanks very much for the support. Just you viewing this video allows us to continue doing what we're doing. So let's, uh, let's get into it. But first a word from our sponsor. If you're in the market for a gaming PC packing one heck of a punch, consider HP's Omen 45L lineup. They sport the latest and greatest from AMD and Intel, including the Ryzen 7 5800X and up to Core i9-12900K, along with graphics cards ranging from the RTX 3060 up to RTX 3090. You'll find 16 gigs of system memory, plenty of storage, and a unique patented Omen cryo chamber for optimal cooling coupled with a 240ml AIO liquid cooler baked in. Take advantage of NVIDIA's DLSS, for excellent frame rates and detail in many modern titles. Customize the look and feel thanks to native RGB functionality and settle for peace of mind with HP's warranty. These are meant to be plug and play experiences with zero hassle. Learn more about HP Omen gaming desktops, including how to save up to 10% with promo codes via the links in this video's description. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the troubleshooting process. Starting first with attempting to power the system on, we need to replicate the issue described by the owner. In this case, it should be uh, the system powers on, but we don't get a signal to our monitor. So what are we dealing with here? Power on at the rear, power button up front. It sounds pretty healthy right away, but nothing. So just as described, no post, or at least no signal. It might be posting, but we're not getting any signal to the monitor. So, um, right. I think we should start with the obvious. We'll clear the CMOS. That takes just a few seconds. That's not likely to be the issue here, but it is just worth getting it out of the way. Uh, we'll also check RAM seating because I am under the impression that has uh, something to do with this. And then we'll start playing around with other hardware. Uh, we'll probably swap the graphics card out just to rule this out as the problem. Everything just powered off again and it powered back on and it powered back off. I, I don't know. 
I'm gonna make sure it doesn't <laughs> post this time. A few moments later. All right, so let's start first by clearing the CMOS. I'll show you how to do that. It takes just a few seconds. So this might be a tad difficult to see because again, this is an MATX board and uh, yeah, normally it'd be somewhere down here. The graphics card's covering it up just a tad. We've got a clear CMOS uh, little inscription here on the PCB and the actual jumper for clearing the CMOS is to the right quite a ways. So uh, it can be a bit deceiving there, the location of the, uh, the label and where the pins are that you need to jump. You wanna take a screwdriver, something that is made of metal, and we're gonna place it just over these two pins and we're gonna hold it here with the system fully powered off for about 10 to 20 seconds. This will utilize the onboard battery and reset all BIOS settings. So if there was an issue uh, with some sort of setting in the BIOS to begin with that was keeping the system from posting, doing this here should get rid of that. It'll reset to factory defaults. The next thing I wanna do is break down this array of DDR4 modules to a single stick. And I'm gonna use a stick that I know works from my own inventory just to rule out any possibility that we might have a dead dim here. Well, I'll just go with a single stick. Of course, they're Vengeance Pro. Clearing the CMOS did nothing, but maybe this will do something. So, DRAM is lighting up. It looks like power delivery across the board uh, is okay. And still nothing. So clearing the CMOS didn't work. Swapping memory, trying multiple slots, just to make sure that uh, we're bypassing any potential memory channel issue, uh, still nothing. And it's still flickering on and off. I don't know what's what's going on. So this, I don't think is a graphics card problem. I will, however, swap it out very quickly just so we can set it aside. I think this is gonna come down to maybe like bent pins in the socket because the owner already told me that he swapped out CPUs thinking that was the issue and it, it didn't actually fix anything. Uh, so that's where I'm going to probably end up spending the bulk of my time. Again, power delivery looks fine. I don't see any issues with the power supply. We can test that as well very quickly. But let's get this graphics card out of here first. By the way, we also just tested running off of integrated graphics to plug in the HDMI cable directly into the motherboard to run off of the CPU's IGP. If it has one, I'm not sure if it does, if it's an f or not. However, we still get nothing. And another thing I did off camera was disconnect all non-vitals, including HD audio at the rear, uh, front panel, which could be to blame. We've run into that before. Disconnected RGB cables, etc. Only the 24 pin and the eight pin EPS are connected to the platform at this point. And uh, yeah, we're still out of luck. So let's get the trusty old GT710. Actually, no, dang it. We keep calling this a GT710. It is not, <laughs> it's uh, an XFX card and they only make AMD stuff. So there's no way this could be that. Uh, it's gotta be some sort of radon card, but it's still nice to have. It's just an extra little placeholder. Uh, when going about troubleshooting, you know, swapping this out for a beefy card just makes a lot more sense. It's also nice that this doesn't need supplemental PCI power. So it just keeps things cleaner. You can install it faster. However, upon booting, we still do not have a picture. So uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to move on to the platform itself. At this point, I would be willing to bet that there's something wrong with the socket or just the motherboard in general. Again, the CPU, if what the viewer told me is correct, having been swapped already for what I believe to be an identical one. I mean, the odds of two CPUs just dying or being dead on arrival, uh, those are pretty, pretty slim. Let's see here, what do we have? I believe it's a 9700 from what I'm told. Uh, yes, oh, it's a 9700KF. It's a K skew and it's an F skew. So yeah, connecting to the motherboard was a bit silly in hindsight, but uh, this is also a K skew. I thought it was not a K skew. So that makes the stock cooler even more of an insult for this thing. This thing wants to just scream in pure agony for overheating and under the minor loads that this uh, system would endure. I cannot believe a stock cooler is being used with this. Oh my gosh. Let's go ahead and take it out and we'll analyze the socket. And at first glance here, oh yeah, definitely, definitely a bent pin over here to the right. This is all it takes, folks. I'm not saying this is the only thing wrong with this system. It very well could be. But uh, yeah, just having one pin bent slightly out of place in these LGA sockets and your system will not post. I'm gonna use a sewing needle like I usually do to try to bend this pin back into place. It looks like it just needs to be pushed a bit closer to the camera. Yeah, I've gotta be very gentle here and bending too much will snap these pins right out of the socket, at which point you're pretty much done. I mean, 
the damage could probably be repaired professionally, but in an office like this, there's just no way. You might as well replace the board. Oh yeah, and this pin is definitely flimsy. I think that'll do it. I'm not sure if the camera's seen it or not. But um, the pins look pretty straight now. Again, I only saw that one that was uh, pushed a bit to the center where it shouldn't be, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and try to power it back on now. Again, I don't think it's a CPU problem just because we've replaced, uh, or the viewer has replaced uh, one of them already, but uh, I do have a ninth gen Intel chip I could put in here if fixing the pin, if that was the issue, doesn't solve the no post problem. And just in case you're wondering, the underside of the CPU in question looks very clean, no issues here. So we'll carefully drop the CPU in and we'll close socket lever and we'll load this back up into the case. Normally I'd keep this stuff outside, but at this point, if the motherboard needs to be replaced, uh, then we're gonna have to take this all back out anyway. I'm gonna have to order a replacement. It'll be a few days down here. So uh, I'm not too worried about, you know, the extra 30 seconds of putting this back in the case. Normally though, if you're troubleshooting, just keep it out, everything out on a test bench or something would be much easier. Let's see then if this is our solution. So, power is on pretty quickly. HDMI is connected to our swapped in graphics card, whatever it is. I still need to figure out what kind of card this is. From XFX. Mm, but it isn't looking too good. Man, I was really hoping that bent pin would be the solution to our problems. All right then. Uh, Let's try swapping the CPU out. I, I don't think the CPU is the problem. I think it's the motherboard, but uh, we'll swap it out just to be on the safe side. I will say, however, that uh, in watching this thing just kind of chill without sending a signal out, the system hasn't reset itself since we fixed that bent pin. So we may have more than one issue on our hands. I'm gonna try just to rule it out, again, because it was brought to my attention uh, by the owner, I'm gonna try moving this DDR4 module to one of the outer two slots to the different channel, because if we have a dead memory channel, it could be the reason why we're not getting a picture out. On top of the bent pin, which would have caused the system to reset the way that it did. Let's give it a shot. 2,000 years later. Nope. Once again in this playlist, we are either back to the motherboard or the CPU. So the easier of the two to swap, because I have one of these on hand, is an extra 9th gen Intel Core. I think I have a Core i9, like a 9900K. Definitely not what you should be using with a stock Intel cooler, but we're just gonna swap it out to rule out his CPU as the issue. Uh, and then if his motherboard is to blame, that is something I will need to order. I don't have any B365s laying around. I might have a replacement Z series equivalent, which I suppose would be an optimal choice considering his CPU is a K-SKU, so you can overclock it, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And with one of my known and working 9th gen Intel chips in there, that's his old one sitting on the table, still a black screen, which means it is very likely his motherboard, which also means I need to buy a motherboard. We'll be right back. We're gonna fast forward a few days. And we're back. I know that looks like a few seconds for you guys, but uh, for me, it took a few days. And we have the replacement motherboard. Now I went out of my way to order an ATX board this time around, so it would look a bit better uh, in his mid tower. Uh, he was rocking a micro ATX. Uh, this also does have Wi-Fi. His did as well. I'm not sure if he has a, a solid like, you know, cable LAN connection, wired LAN. Uh, so I made sure that I also got him a, a wireless LAN board like the one that he currently has. Uh, I checked the pins. Everything looks really clean here. It was packaged nicely. So the only thing to do then is swap over his components onto this platform and we'll power it up. This is literally the only thing we have left to swap. So if this doesn't fix it, um, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just gonna throw in the towel. I don't know. It should fix it though. We'll get this rear IO shield situated. We've relocated standoffs to accommodate the ATX board this time around. Try to move all these cables out of the way. Uh, it just looks so much better, so much more complete with a full-size motherboard in here. Love it. RTX 2070 going back in. Everything has been, oh, we gotta move one slot down. Oh, these are the, these are the stupid, like one-time use PCIe slot covers. That sucks, so he's gonna have a bit of a gap here. But uh, not the end of the world. Get this 2070 in here, and uh, yeah, what I was saying is everything has been rewired. 
including now the graphics card. So we are just about ready. If I can get this stupid cable connected, we're just about ready to fire it back up. And uh, I'm gonna be crossing everything I got that this motherboard swap fixes the issue. Here we are then, this is the moment of truth. I'm, um, I'm anxious, been building up for several days now, all to this moment. Just uh, powered off again. Is there a reason why the fans aren't lighting up? <gasps> there it is. That is a post. Let me get my keyboard. We'll hop into the BIOS, enable XMP, whatever I need to take care of. That, that's, a, <laughs> that's a relief. So XMP profile one looks good. We'll tab over to save and exit. And I think we should boot into Windows this time around. I've got the, uh, the boot drive as well as the additional storage drives connected to the motherboard. The only thing at this point that the owner will need to do if he wants to tweak anything in the BIOS, he can take care of that. And also potentially upgrade that CPU cooler because boy oh boy, it's gonna need it. You know, I should, uh, should probably actually power these drives on and uh, connect SATA data on the other side before attempting to do this. Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes I have a bit of a brain fart or two. Hey, there we go. And looking good on the LEDs again. We're into Windows. Fantastic. Well then, a uh, great way to end this one, always with good news. Uh, happy to see that the system is back up and running. We also, I um, guess in a small sort of way, gave him a bit of an upgrade because he's got an ATX motherboard now, which I think fits the case a bit better. Uh, still has all the features he's looking for. Uh, the only thing that I, again, would recommend the upgrade is that cooler, which is gonna be crippling that K series i7 SKU. Uh, this is the point where Usually I get a few folks in the comments, why don't you upgrade them, Greg? I upgrade almost every single build that comes into this office, okay? I can't always do it. I always try, but uh, I do have a couple coolers that I already have allocated for other builds we're working on uh, that you may or may not have already seen, depending on when I decide to publish this one. So um, th I think that the big takeaway here is that the system is working again, at least, so we can get into his, uh, yeah, get into his rig, his files, and do whatever he needs to do with it. So uh, with that, if you guys, again, have broken systems and you do live in or around Orlando, Florida, you have to be local or at least willing to drop it off. I have people say they'll drive eight hours to come see me. I'm like, okay, bud, but uh, if it takes a week to fix, which in this case it did, because I have to order stuff, you're either gonna have to drive down here twice, eight hours each way, or you're gonna have to get a hotel and stay here for an indefinite amount of time. That's a lot of pressure on me, especially because I, you know, then I feel like I have to rush to fix it. And what if I don't fix it? Then you drove down here for nothing. So just, that's why I insist on being local because um, I don't wanna be, you know, I don't know, attacked for wasting someone's time when that's what I always say up front, this could be a flop, but uh, glad this one worked out. So if you do have a broken system, Again, the description is going to have a form where you can um, yeah, sign up to, to be considered if it looks like a, a hardware issue, especially as the ones we tend to target first. Uh, and uh, please don't submit the same thing like 20 times. If, like a couple people are like resubmitting their same entry over and over and over again, we just end up blocking those because if, if they haven't already been considered, there's probably a reason why. And we're working on changing the way that our notification system works uh, on that form so that you're notified if we either approve or reject the submission. So uh, growing pains, but we'll get there. Uh, other than that, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this one. Did you get it right? Did you think it was the motherboard? I'm not sure what specifically about that board is bad, but uh, I know we fixed the bent pin issue elsewhere. Could be chipset related, uh, could be a fried, I don't know, transistor, who knows. But uh, yeah, the end result is at least a positive one. Consider liking, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.